Hello everyone, in this video we will be seeing Introduction to Amsler's Grid Test, Prerequisites, Stepwise Clinical Procedure, Recording Findings on Amsler's Chart, Examples of Distortions on Amsler's Grid Recorded and Clinical Interpretation. In the last video we saw what are Amsler's Grid Charts. The Amsler's Grid or Charts are a series of 7 different kinds of charts which when held at distance of 30 cm from the eye allow the assessment of central 20 degrees of the visual field and helps record any kind of distortions experienced by the patient secondary to retinal disease or disorder. These charts are in shape of squares covering an area of 100 cm square that is 10 cm by 10 cm with each chart having a different pattern and a purpose. Prerequisites Before the test is administered, the patient should be wearing the appropriate correction for test distance. No lights should be shown in the eyes immediately before the test and the pupils should remain normally constricted. The chart should be uniformly illuminated. The patient is asked to fix gaze on the central white or black dot and answer the clinician's questions during the test. All the questions should be logical and should be asked in a sequence, one after the other. Scotoma Before starting procedure, we need to know about scotoma. To know what is scotoma, we need to know about what is threshold. Threshold Minimum amount of light required to see an object is called threshold. Below this level of light, object can't be seen. It will be invisible. In our retina, fovea has the finest threshold. Even with dim light, object can be seen. When we move from fovea to periphery, threshold increases. We need brighter light to see object. Scotoma a defect of visual field surrounded by a normal visual field. Relative scotoma. When in a particular area in the retina, the threshold is increased or need brighter light than normal to see object, it is called relative scotoma. Absolute scotoma. Absolute scotoma is a type of visual field defect where object can't be seen even with the brightest that is maximum light. Let us begin with the questions that we need to ask the patient in order to perform the Amsler's grid test. Question 1. Can you see the central white or black dot? The test can begin with patient viewing the chart 1 type Amsler's grid. The purpose of this question is to rule out a central scotoma that is a central visual loss. If the answer is yes, a central scotoma is unlikely. If the answer is it looks washed out or slightly blurry or hazy. A central scotoma may be indicated. The patient is then asked to outline the limits of the area that appears blurry or hazy on the grid with a finger or a pen. If the answer is no, a central scotoma is present. The patient is then asked to outline the borders of the defect which is covering the central dot with a finger or a pen on the grid. If the above technique does not help with chart 1, the clinician should use chart 2, Amsler's grid. Question 2. Can you see all four sides of the large square as well as all four of its corners? The patient is asked to continue looking at the central dot while answering. If yes, the clinician can proceed to question 3. If no, the patient should be asked to outline or mark the involved area or areas and describe the defect as accurately as possible. Example, left corner of the chart is covered by the black or the white wavy cloud on looking at the white dot etc. This information may greatly assist the clinician in establishing a diagnosis. If the test is performed for patients with a history of nutritional amblyopia, long intake of chloroquine or steroids or the same is suspected, then Amsler's chart 3 should be presented to the patient. Question 3. While looking at the central dot, are any of the small squares blurry or missing on any part of the grid? 
the patient is asked to continue looking at the central dot while answering. If the answer is no, the clinician may proceed to question 4. If the answer is yes, then the clinician must rule out the false positive response error that may occur due to the presence of any media opacities or due to incorrect prescription worn by the patient. If the answer is still a yes and the area inside the squares is missing or are blurry, this indicates a scotoma, that is, field loss. The patient must locate the area with the missing or blurry squares, outline it with a pen and record it on the chart. The clinician can present the chart for Amsler's for better understanding of the defect. Question 4. While looking at the central dot, do any of the horizontal, that is lines across or vertical, that is lines up to down, appear wavy or bent? If the answer is no, the clinician can proceed to the next question. If the answer is yes, the clinician must rule out the false positive response error that may occur due to the patient noticing distortion while looking through the different segment borders of a trifocal lens or while looking through the periphery of a progressive addition lens. If the answer is yes, after ruling out errors, then true metamorphopsia, that is distortions arising from involvement of the retinal area, is present. The waviness of the lines may range from minimal to severe. Some distorted lines may appear discontinuous or broken. Some squares can have barrel-shaped distortions, that is macropsia, or have shape of pincushion, that is micropsia. Sometimes the vertical lines appear to be more distorted than the horizontal lines and vice versa. These distortions can be well recorded using the Amsler's charts 5 and 6. Question 5. Is any part of the grid or the chart shimmering, flickering or colored? If the answer is no, the series of questions is complete. If the answer is yes, this is an indication of a scotoma related to retinal involvement like a hemorrhage that might cause a retinal detachment leading to distorted vision among other causes. Recording the findings on Amsler's chart. How to record findings on the Amsler's chart? The following data needs to be recorded on the Amsler's chart. Name and age of the patient along with the date on which the test is performed. Documenting the eye to which the chart that is showing changes belongs to when both eyes were tested uniocularly with separate Amsler's grid used for each eye. Example, right eye or OD, central dot not seen. Left eye or OS, no abnormality detected, etc. Marking or outlining the areas on the chart that showed changes as indicated by the patient and describing them in patient's words. Example, right eye. This marked corner was covered with black cloud while looking straight at the dot in the center. The Amsler's grid findings recorded for each eye needs to be attached along with the other ocular test findings for concluding the diagnosis. Let us now look at the examples of different kinds of distortions recorded on Amsler's chart in different kinds of conditions. Here you can see a patient's Amsler's chart findings for the right eye. That is, in right eye, Amsler's grid drawings and OCT of a patient with cystoid macular edema that is swelling in the retinal tissue due to central retinal vein occlusion can be seen here. Another example shown here are the Amsler's grid drawings seen in varied types of visual field defects due to glaucomatous effects involving the optic nerve. Clinical Interpretation Diseases that disrupt the retinal areas may be seen on the standard Amsler's grid as areas of distortions or metamorphopsia. The absence of a defect does not rule out the existence of a lesion but may indicate the need for a more sensitive form of testing. In the next video, we are going to take a look at the types of modified testing methods that can be employed using Amsler's grid. Stay tuned with Smart Optometry for more educational videos.